From the Chicago Sun-Times newsroom, I'm Natasha Karecki, and this is Off Message, our weekly politics show. Joining us this week is our City Hall reporter, Fran Spielman, Dan Mialopoulos, our Watchdog reporter, and our early and often columnist, and Mick Dumkey, a political reporter from the Chicago Reader. We're going to start off with a topic that uh, will be with us for some time snow removal and salt. And we have an alderman that you've been writing about who's saying that residents now have unreal expectations of the city. You know, we don't have too many expectations of them, but some basics are clean up the snow and pick up our garbage, right? Well, this comes from the fact that the city poured salt all over the place and almost ran out and it had really very little to show for it. And what Joe Moore is saying is that we in Chicago now, since Balandic was thrown out of office in the blizzard of 79, expect the mayors to literally run out and catch the snowflakes before they hit the ground. <laughs> and he's saying it's time to level with the public. In dwindling resources, we just can't do it all. Well, I mean, what do you guys think? Uh, Joe Moore is going to hear from these people, isn't he? Oh, yeah. He's already got a lot of people in his ward that are on his case for various issues. And this is practically heretical. It's one of those things that even if you think it, you probably shouldn't say it in Chicago <laughs> politics. But uh, as it stands, I think uh, it will be going on campaign literature if he has a well-funded enough opponent to circulate some Well, don't uh, you think somebody mail. told Rom, like, look, if there's one thing you've got to do, it's clean up the snow. He, he, I mean, in the middle of his campaign, we had the blizzard of, of uh, 2011 that ground Lakeshore Drive to a halt. That was a disaster that right. played around the world. So he sees and he knows very recently, not just Balandic, how difficult snow can be for mayors heading into campaigns. That's why he spent more than half his snow removal budget already. I think it's interesting, though, that Joe Moore is saying this. I mean, this is a guy who for years was known as an antagonist to the mayor. No and longer. Exactly. I think this is a, a, actually a symbol. It's not just about snow and ice. It's about Joe Moore and his alliance with City Hall. It's a guy who just a few years ago was fighting tooth and nail for, and he would speak out on things like funding for the inspector general's office. Now here he is, is basically saying, hey, everybody, get used to the fact you're still paying the same amount, but we're going to be reducing services for you. Do you think that anyone's going to align their expectations with what he's saying? It, no, I think that Rahm is going to overspend his budget and he's going to have to have a supplemental appropriation and we're going to be in trouble financially, as, as if we aren't already. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, shifting gears here a little bit, I'm going to turn to you, Dan, because you had a very interesting interview this week with Ambrosio Medrano. What did you take away um, from your interview with him? This is another one of these stories that you say to yourself, only in Chicago, and probably only in Chicago and very few places will you see a guy who's been convicted once come out, get back into the political game, albeit not as an elected official, as an aide, and get in trouble not once, but twice. So now he's facing 13 years uh, at the age of 60. Can anyone learn from this? Can well, what strikes me about Medrano, I remember in the 90s when he was welcomed back to City Hall like a hero because he hadn't snitched. Mm -hmm. He didn't wear a wire. Mm -hmm. And here he is again saying, I didn't snitch, like that's the badge of honor, even after a second time. Where is the badge of honor? What about honesty? How about that? Well, his attitude is, well, I just don't feel comfortable wearing a wire and going out there and getting somebody else in trouble, uh, I want to bear the consequences alone for my uh, actions. It again. stops with me. Now other people will look at that and certainly think he's trying to protect somebody specific, perhaps somebody that he's even afraid of, and also that he uh, will be taken care of for being a stand-up guy, for or standing up to the federal heat. Well, his son has a city job. His, his wife has had a city job since shortly after uh, he went to jail for the first time, and I think you remember friend Mayor Daly defended uh, hiring her, saying, what do you want me to do, throw her out on the street? And there's a small point that your choice isn't to wear a wire or not to wear a wire. It's to not get in a position where you even Need have to. that. Yeah, as, as a, well, yeah. Um, we could keep talking about this for a while, but let's, I don't want to forget about the quote of the week. You look so prepared. Let's start with you. <laughs> you know, I am this week. Uh, I like the quote about the debate over dog parks uh, where Alderman Amaya Pawar said, uh, the demographics of the city are changing. People are having children later. Some people are choosing not to have children. People have more dogs. Parks in our city should reflect that. So we're closing schools, demanding more money for dog <laughs> parks, 
And where the salt's going to come from, it's on its way, I guess. <laughs> Mine is about e-cigarettes. Alderman Ray Colon said, we keep using children as an excuse to pass any ordinance we want to pass because who can deny the children? It bugs me. And this is after Mayor Rahm Emanuel used the children to justify e-cigarettes, to justify the school closings, to justify speed cameras. I actually had the same one. Yeah. It's one of the oldest tricks in the political playbook, is this is all for the kids and whatever. And I think you know, Rahm Emanuel has sort of this Michael Bloomberg complex, and so he wants to be this public health guy while he's being a bad guy in all these other ways. Don't worry about any research or not, you know, what, whether the feds have weighed in or there's any science behind this decision. Let's legislate now and worry about that later. Well, I guess mine is a pretty simple one. It was Kirk Dillard earlier this week. I asked him, well, you know, when you were chief of staff to Jim Edgar, didn't you make any considerations? And he said, no, not me. It was that moment where you're just like, that is going to be used in a commercial <laughs> and they're going to play it over and over again. No, not me. Um, but with that, thank you to our guests and thank you for joining us this week. No, not me. <laughs>